Have you noticed you get a squint when you drink coffee? Ah. Not sure why, really. <laughs> this is something useless. Today we're going to be looking at zenithal highlighting, or priming. Uh, we're going to see how to do it and to see if it's actually even necessary. Oh, it is. Okay. Before we get started, let's demystify this spooky word a little bit. <laughs> I think it maybe lends itself to being I don't know, a little intimidating to new painters when I first heard it. I was like, oh, what is that? That's, <laughs> that's already out of my league. So zenithal highlighting is essentially a technique where uh, you prime your model completely in black or any dark color representing shadows. So we'll take a look here. And then coming back uh, from a higher angle using a light color. So in this case, we're using white. There we go. You can see it's white on the top, black on the bottom, and as you rotate around the model, you get uh, just kind of a nice transition there. Um, this just is an easy, easy way of taking your painting up to another level. I'm no master painter by any means, but when I started using this technique, it, it really helped. To help us understand the process of zenithal highlighting, uh, we're going to need a few things. A model, black primer, white primer, paper, and a turntable. I'll get into items 4 and 5 a little later on. Alright, for our demo purposes today, I'm using a Dankhold Dragoff by Games Workshop. It's a beautiful little model, and I think it really demonstrates the benefit of zenithal highlighting. Here we have Carl. Carl has recently been promoted to head trog boss because of his improvements in the field of spiders. Please pay attention to the shadows on Carl as he awkwardly twirls around. Uh, you'll notice that the shadows remain directly opposite of the light source. I mean, that's, that's what shadows do. Um, but what we're trying to achieve by zenithal highlighting is the shadow effect from a light source being held uh, directly overhead. Uh, like the lighting is at high noon when the sun is at its zenith, a la zenithal. Let's get back to our item list. Uh, the first thing we're going to use is a turntable. But I know what you're thinking. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a toying table. I think I'm just gonna quit and go get shmammered. While you're off getting shmammered, remember to steal a sh don't steal. Um, purchase a shot glass. I'm sure you've already got one laying around though. Take your shot glass here, put a little bit of that blue stretchy goop on top, slam a model on, and looky there, you've got a little hand powered, slightly elevated turntable. I have my own turntable though, so I'm going to use that. So there's Carl here. Get him centered up on your turntable. And remember that sheet of paper I talked about earlier? You're going to need to build yourself a wall. And again, of course, I know exactly what you're thinking. Oh geez, Lance, uh, how do I build something that complicated? I got you, fam. Take your sheet of paper from the item list earlier, make a crease down the middle, fold it over, crisp it up, and baby, you got yourself a wall. The primer I'm using for this video is Stylo Res, uh, airbrush primer. I love it. The white's a little thick for my taste, but you can just thin it down and you're, and you're good to go. Okay, so I've started laying down a coat of black primer on Carl here. Uh, for this technique, it's really important to make sure that the entire model is coated, but also especially sure that his uh, under bits are, are nice and nice and coated. All right, while we got this airbrush going, let's bring in some of Carl's buddies. I wish I had buddies. Here we have Lenny on his 
uh, mini horse. Um, so we're gonna give uh, give Lenny here a nice uh, coat of black, just like we did Carl there. Uh, he's a little bit harder to get to because he's already glued to his base, but no big deal. Just just jam that airbrush primer or your rattle can in there. Okay, so here we're working with um, Patricia. Oh, she's so sweet. When you're spraying the underneath of the model, just make sure that you're not uh, spraying it on so thick as to get drips or anything like that, obviously, but just make sure that you're getting all uh, those little nooks and crannies too, because that really helps with this effect. Really the reason why I was uh, priming a few extra models there is just so I didn't waste the uh, paint my airbrush, but Essentially what I do is I let my paint run down super low, um, just right before the point where it's going to run out, and that is when I add my white primer. So I give it, uh, I don't really even give it little uh, much of a mix, I just uh, pop the white primer in there and then just start running it through the airbrush. And most of the time I'll just kind of start on some uh, other models I got laying around just to kind of mix it in there. but. It's a cool transition between uh, your black and your white, which just gives you kind of a, a gray mid-tone. I know what you're thinking. Hey, what about that wall we built? Time to shine, little wall. I set up our wall here. Uh, you'll notice it's about the same height as the model. If you're just a little tall or a little short, you can just find something to substitute. You'll see this 45 degree arc here. That's where we're gonna stay spraying with the white in our airbrush. Um, and you'll get a different arc from your actual airbrush nozzle, so you'll essentially get the coverage you need. All right, so I'm gonna start spraying here, um, just like you would. I'm keeping a nice distance. Um, I'm running a pretty high air pressure. And I'm just gonna kinda work this arc. I'm just gonna constantly rotate uh, my model here as I'm working within this 45 degree arc. And you'll see um, some of this detail start to really pop out just because of the contrast between the white and the black. I really wanted to use this model for this demonstration just because he's got so many little areas that um, are kind of hidden there. So once that white starts going on, hey, you get lots of really awesome shadow effects just from all his little uh, mushrooms and barnacles and everything else that's sticking off of him. Pretty much the same uh, process with Lenny here. Uh, I think Lenny's horse's legs may have fallen off at some point, but and you'll see these uh, details start to pop off. I'm a little close. <laughs> I don't have him tacked down, so he was wanting to blow off of there. But yeah, it's a, essentially just the same process. And you don't really need this wall. I just wanted to show that for just for demonstration purposes of that that angle and the um, height that you're looking at to hit. You'll see me doing just the same technique now, just without the paper wall. You get a little more freedom here, but again, you'll start seeing those details pop out. You can see the shadows underneath and uh, the lightness up above. Make sure too, though, don't be like me and uh, orient your model the correct way before you start doing this. I forgot that her back legs are on a little stump thing, so I just want to make sure that my angles were all correct. So let's get to that is it necessary part. Um, what I've got, I've got three little spider riders here uh, primed up. The first one is all white. The second one is zenithal, and the third one obviously is all black. So um, we're gonna lay a coat of just uh, opaque airbrush paint down, and um, that way you can see the, the difference in color there. Here I'm laying down some opaque violet airbrush paint. The more thinly that you apply your paints, the more you'll benefit from this priming technique. Obviously, the more paint that's down, the, the less of the undercoat that's gonna show through. But as you can see on the side view of these spider riders, the one in the middle has the best balance of shadows and bright top coloration. Back to Carl here. You'll notice that the underside of this model is almost purely black, and as we rotate to the top side, it's almost completely white. 
this is exactly what you're looking for. And you can control how drastic this contrast is by either increasing or decreasing that angle of spray for your white primer that we discussed earlier. I'm using these colors of light to represent a thin top coat of paint and demonstrate how the shadowing and highlighting effects of our primer job stay with the model. If you're not currently using this zenithal technique, I'd encourage you to give it a try. It's a great way of improving your final results on a model with uh, very little effort. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something from it. I know I learned a lot just uh, from making the video. If you could please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, and all that jazz, I would appreciate it so much. I'm hoping to start pumping out about one of these videos a week, uh, so doing one or all of those three things would be the very best way to uh, help support this channel. And that's it for me guys, have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. The harder you squint when you're drinking coffee, the, uh, the better it tastes.